Shots fired. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is a completely brand new team. So the thing is, is that they will be under scrutiny and criticism no matter what they do, and it's completely fine to give them sc uh, scrutiny and criticism because nature of the beast. It's of course exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of expectation going into this. Like, there's they're essentially like a uh, celebrity team right now. Um, so that's cool. It's cool that the spotlight is on them in that way, actually. Um, and of course, the pressure you know makes makes every match uh, that much more important for them as well to to make sure that their performances are as good as they can make them. And I don't think I've even seen them play Dust Two recently. Lord, I, know, I, I, I think they actually got destroyed by Acer. I think it was on Dust Two. So, Minis. So uh, we're gonna have to look to see if Kingwin have implemented some changes in their Mishu. in their uh, Mihu. Spiro. Mihu. Lord. We need to get that video out again later, that was awesome. Alright, so Gamers 2 get long for free as Kingwin seems to be um, focusing on holding down short with two players, one player on the A side as well. Now he's got five people to uh, contend against. It's Whitten's going to go down straight away. Got a crossfire between short and the uh, Gandalf area, as Dan calls it. We'll see if they can hold. Yeah, they have a nice setup at the moment, so Kingwin have a lot to do. Rain will start things off, they get to pick on to move. As he makes his way in. And they are closing in, but Mihu going to be fighting back there, taking down Scream. In the same mode, but it's not going to be enough this time around. Mihu with a jump, and it's going to work out there. Rain goes down. Now just Spiro. Uh, Mihu here. Mihu! And they will be able to pick up the round. So good, good hold all in all. Pretty Lord. Simple, simple strat. They didn't really make it complicated at all. They just rushed long and just got the bomb down and just set up. You saw Fox going for the knife at the end there. He's going for the value play, Dan. Value. He wants the value. He didn't get the value, that's, but that's what he wanted, Dan. He wanted the value. Why? Why? Because he's making the best play he can in the, situ in the unwinnable situation, Dan. Alright, well, we're going to have another long take here from Gamers 2. As they get the quick kill from it as well, it is Pistol Armor here for Team Kingwin. And he was uh, going for the most optimal play, considering the situation, Dan. It's like high risk, high reward. In that, uh, well, there's the, the well, there is no risk he's gonna die, so he's going for the highest reward, possibly. Yes, um, well, we're gonna have Whitten, Whitten with the kill on my eyes. Quit Sh done. Scream gonna make his way through. Oh my goodness, Miki gonna go down at range there, finds the taps onto him. Now they have to make this play on the one side. They do have the bomb moving in, and they are gonna be able to plant that one down, but they are gonna be against a few players here. Spiro will make that a few players less. Spiro, as he takes down Fox. And we do have Scream and Quitten now making their way into this. However, Scream does want to go for the save on that AK. Quitten, however, could try to get next hit. There is three players remaining. So he could very well get some damage done here, maybe pick up a weapon. I never Not considered Scream's output potential with a CZ, considering his aim. Yeah, I mean, he. It's a P250 on crack, Dan. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that he chose, of course, between, between that and 5.7. And I would, would always have assumed that, that he would go for 5.7. But of course, you know, CZ does have its utility. It's, there are spots where it's better than the 5.7. But the 5.7 is better in more spots, just generally speaking. It's like, it's like the choice with the, between the M4A1S and the M4A4. Just generally speaking, the M4A1S gives you more advantages. Um, just a kind of like more generally than the M4A1, uh, M4A4 does. It's more situational. I guess the bullets are going to be considerably more powerful now on the 5.7 as well, considering the nerf to the CZ. Yeah, I mean, th it has good range, loads of bullets. It's pretty accurate, to be honest, and it does a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot of damage. It's like a much more accurate, better version of a PTP. Okay, so Whitten is on short with the uh, CZ. See if he can get any kills there. There's one. He gets a second one as well. That CZ still with lots of utilities. You can see that, especially in that position, close quarters combat right there. So suddenly a three versus three. That nade is going to ruin Fox for this round. Only Rain and Makalele remain. Mini's getting one kill, and I think he got the sound cube as to the player on short, so that's going to be um, another round in the bag here for Gamers 2. Losing two players. But so uh, but they went, they but both went down to that quick CZ. Yeah, so Fox is going to pick up the AWP, and the, the curious thing here is that I want to see how they want to play with it, because are they going to go for the 2-3, where Fox just is the like, crossover orb, just a you know, really, really solid, safe kind of play that so many teams have, have uh, been using on Dust2 recently? Or are they going to try to mix things up a little bit? We actually have a faster rotate from... Uh, it, who is that? It's uh, down by underneath Catwalk there. It is Quitten. He's down by CT spawn, so very, very fast uh, on the timing there. So they give up Catwalk completely in this kind of a setup. And 
Gamers who just have to abuse this. It's, it should be for free. And then it's going to come down to Fox hitting the shots if they try to challenge into the A bomb site. That's kind of what it what it is. But they're just going to try to bait out some flashes, see if they can find some Kingwin players at the moment. But this this problem is uh, the problem is uh, the cap drop. That's really scary if they don't telegraph it. That's one of the scariest things here. Also, the Wall of Smokes play. Those are the two scariest plays that Gamers Two could uh, put onto Kingwin right now. Gamers 2 preparing for the splits here. Now they've got significant control of the short area. Going to put the bodies towards long. Worth noting that Fox does not have any armor in this situation. There's a flashbang you see commonly through B doors. Now becoming more common in long. Fox getting the trade there onto long. But he will get quickly taken down by Innocent. Left all alone on long. So it has been lost. And now Gamers 2 are in a strong position where Kingwin do not have short or long. So this reset is going to be hard. They started the run with limited nades. They've got one flash and that's it. So they may all go for a short push here. How much time are they going to put onto this? This is not going to be easy at all. Against double orcs as well. Yeah, it's going to be the save. It's just one of those spots where they just want to go for it. Um, yeah, th they couldn't quite hold on on long. It's kind of a smart, smart play for games two to just... Because the thing is, is that if you just play really good basic counter strike, you can often just beat really good teams or really good uh, aimers, for example. Mm. Especially if you're the T side, because if you are effectively trading into certain areas, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to make those very simple plays work. But having certain positions on the map is very, very strong. Of course, with the setup that Kingwin were running, uh, or Fox is always going to be in a lot of danger if Long gets taken very quickly. And they didn't really telegraph it; they just, they just hit it up so quickly that Fox had to commit to actually just try to get some damage done. And of course he got taken down, even if he was traded on, even if it went like three versus three, there's still a huge advantage for gamers too. So that's like a really hard spot that they put King Kingwin in. So now we're gonna see the force up with the three weapons that they saved. Now, hopefully for them, they are gonna be able to, able to hold on to long a little bit better, but maybe gamers two are going to try to condition them to do that. And if there's two players on long too much of the time, then it's going to be really hard to stop the B plays and you know, rotate for those. So you saw Maniz push all the way through double doors here to get a frag into CT. There was a bit of an engagement on long as well, but nobody down for either team. You can see this, the uh, default for King Gwyn is the... Normally uh, you see the person on a slope flashing in for his teammates, but rather than do that, he was holding it for more of a defensive play if the push came in. But again, uh, game is to just holding on to short for the time being. And uh, Kingwin uh, spread thin on the A site at the moment. We have uh, Fox on A slope between A slope and CT. And you have Rain here holding down long alone, which is uh, a common spot. Just have a solo player later on into the round. We've got a boost, I think, on short as they're trying to find someone to pick. But there's nobody on the A site. Two people playing B and the rotation starting to come in. Not sure what Interesting. that was about. Rain is going to catch quick CT frag, make it two. That's a really big deal. Now it's just the three remain the remaining players, sorry, of Gamers 2 making their way up from Catwalk. Now, the plant is uh, it's not really a plant for Cat or this way or, or that way, to be honest. It's just in this in the site, not easy to, super easy to defend. They're going to have to make the frags here so you can get assaulted from Catwalk. Now, so has to go really hard, but he cannot do it. Spiro gets annihilated by Scream as well as he enters into the bomb site, and they will get the defuse. So... Rain is the hero of this round with that FAMAS by the blue container by Long. He was the one that made that really, really winnable for Team Kingwin. Yeah, but also the fact that he held Long while that retake began. He, he only died late on just before Scream came and cleared, cleaned things up. So uh, it made Gamers 2 have to focus on uh, bi-directional assaults, which is uh, very strong for a CC retake, for an example there. See that nade being used more commonly to pass the double doors as opposed to smokes. Covers uh, that gap in crap. So, King Gwen back to the default again. With uh, one A slope, one B slope. Two people long, retracting one after a certain timing. But again, uh, short will be taken somewhat for free for now. With Fox heading over in that direction a bit later on. He's just holding the angle there. Jump down onto the slope if required. Two gamers, two plays heading over towards B tunnels at the moment. But again, uh, you can see short control is very important, but they're only just starting to emerge around that corner now, and Fox has since moved back onto the site. The games two actually have a very, very slow uh, pace into taking short control. Uh, usually you would expect it to be a bit quicker 
And when you see short controls just for free like that, it actually gives you a fairly sizable tell that the setup is 2-3. And, uh, you know, because it's so common right now, and, and, th and the free catwalk is a really big, big indicator. If you want to confirm it, then you can uh, you can push into mid for an entry and see what you can find out there. That could be why the entire team is pretty much moving towards the B-bomb fight. I'm going to go straight forward though. Minais with a quick entry onto Michael Ele, but there's a threat in the corner in screen, but he will go down immediately. Now, what the hell do Team Kingwin do at the moment? They've got a lurker to deal with on short, and the bomb's going to go down, and there's smokes, nades for days. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be another save here for Kingwin. Again, Mishu in a very important position, which has pretty much forced the uh, CTs over towards the long area because while he's heavily tagged, he's still alive. And if they were going to try and push that retake, go under through uh, CT spawn, then that flank would have been all over them. So they're going to have to save. And it looks like the hunt is on. Somewhat of a passive hunt at the moment. Gamers 2 just holding angles here, trying to identify it where they are. But they're narrowing down the options. It will be a crossfire from the CTs, but I don't know how much engagement they're going to get here. As it's pretty much only uh, Minis in a position to bring the pain. So they will survive again with three players. We may see some kind of buy for the other two, but we may see, well, we won't see much. I mean, a FAMAS and maybe an MP7 or something. In fact, it will be the mag. Like one thing that Team Kingman can do is to try to, like, I mean, games too, if, if they're starting to read their timings, their timings are into short really late. So they could try to have. Um, as a setup where they got two players towards Cap, but hold that for we have a really fast take into mid here from Manai. He's just going to go straight in. Look at the timing, completely catching with and off guard. No idea what's coming for them, but now they're starting to figure it out. They have a player trying to hold on to Upper Dark. It's Fox, but he gets annihilated by Spiro as Scream has to defend it. Blown against an entire angry Polish lineup as that pace was blistering, and I love how slow they've been taking it, and then now they're like, boom, we can do it super fast as well. Yeah, that is uh, ruin, complete ruin for King Gwyn there. Burning down the villages, taking all these sausages and leaving them with a bit of straw and some dirty water. Pretty much what happened there. Just Rain and Makalele trying to survive for another round. And uh, all these saves here just allowing gamers to, to build a significant lead on their T side. Although when King Gwyn are unleashed on their own T side, then all hell may break loose. But they need to get there with a few rounds in the bag. And so far, they've only got one. I think like a round like that really shows the experience of Games 2 as a, as a lineup that's played together for a long time as well. But one thing they were banking on is that even if Kingwin did have an AWP, that AWP would never be taking a gamble to try to pick mid at the start of the round. So they get a really free timing with this not telegraphed at all, straight down into middle. Just because of the nature that Kingwin cannot feel confident or comfortable in taking such a gambly play as to challenge mid. Well, they don't have the money to do it. That was a really early Molotov over well attempted over the door i'm not sure what the the king do idea have behind that was themselves up top mid now oh look at this so they're trying to uh, take back well it's one of those situations where they have very limited resources and they want to try and get that early advantage and there's lots of roaming going on there's in fact a flank from rain here he's going to see one player surprise he goes down but he doesn't know who is where and now he's stuck in between two spiro going to take him down from t spawn bombs still headed over towards b and they're creeping into b now so king Gwyn find himself out of position despite the flank and uh we've got minis here to run distraction if he goes down then it may be a 4v3 retake this is really good play so far here from gamers too got a nice advantage they have the b on site they've you know kind of put a distraction towards a making Kingman think that perhaps they should keep players on A for the time being in case the bomb could be going that way, but now it's been confirmed the bomb is being planted on that B bomb site. This is going to be weird now for gamers too because they're at a man disadvantage. They've got one person severely out of position here in T spawn. So it's basically a four versus two with two people coming in the tunnel. And I don't know if Mies is going to get there in time to stop them crossing the path. I know he's there, but uh, how much traction can they run? We've got McAuley running and he's not going to win the duel. Only one frag for him. And it uh, looks like Gamers 2 will indeed hold once again. Yeah, really nice stuff there. Minoy is just in the nick of time, causing enough distraction to stop that rapid and through Upper Dark, which would have been probably the end of uh, that round. However I'm, however, I'm not sure if, th if they actually even had a kit, so maybe they would have killed enough time anyway. But Gamers 2, again, showing that they... Ha like that, that round was so much about their super slow pace, allowing them to make an informed decision when they knew Kingwin were desperate and that Kingwin would likely try to do something that was desperate. Indeed they did, went for a mid push and they got uh, the slight advantage there with the trade. 
Now we're going to see that uh, they're going to go for a bit of a spread here. An upper dark, very heavy upper dark. They are perhaps expecting on the buy that Kingwin are going to say, guys, our 2 3 set has just not been working. We need to actually try to take some map control. We need to get some aggression going. And the most typical way to do that is for an upper dark take. But we can see Gamers 2 have players in place in case that would happen. So I really like the fort here. And if it didn't happen, well, hey, they can still go for that B split. I like that combination they threw double doors there. It was quite smart. Trying to force somebody out of there and nading them on the way should somebody be there. This is the first time Kingwin, um, in recent memory at least, have had a reasonable buy in terms of weaponry. They kind of maxed out there, but they still started extremely limited on the nades. They have only one kit on Whitten, two flashes on Rain. That's all that's left in their infantry here for them to hold. That said, there are 35 seconds left on the clock for Gamers 2, and they don't really have any significant uh, map control just yet. We've got one person, that's Miniz, pushing towards B bomb site. Unbeknownst to him, there is a crossfire in play, but he's not going to get the first duel onto screen. Let's see what kind of effect this has on the uh, formation of the CTs. They're going to have Rain trying to hold things down, but he's got support, which falls as well. So long has gone, but there are 18 seconds now for Gamers 2 to charge towards the site and try and take the bomb, the bomb plant here. And that smoke was absolutely horrendous. It's not going to help out at all when the spray will come down. And uh, the idea of that from Gamers 2 was quite nice. However, they were... They, I mean, I guess you can say that they could have been overcomplicating things a little bit. They could have kept it simple and just gone for the the uh, B split execute um, when they had all the players in position without having the the early uh, early pick. I think that still could have been very successful. However, they decided to try to actually bait Kingwin by l making it look like they're trying to take middle control. And Kingwin already knew that they had upper dark, so they're really posturing that B play and trying to throw that uh, throw the distractions in there. But it didn't quite work out. Let's see if Kingwin can keep the ball rolling though. They have. Cat control, and this is what we were talking about earlier. This mix-up can be powerful if the uh, opposition is conditioned in, into thinking that it's uh, for free. And Rain is in a really good position. And with that AWP support above and the potential for team flashing over to any players attacking, if they go for Cat, it's going to be very dangerous. But they're not even going to set foot up there, really. They're going to go straight through middle for this B play. Now Kingwin is going to have a, a fast rotation, but this is still going to be tough to hold. Yeah, Whitson got a kill here early on, and they're trying to play against the normal idea of avoiding the place where they just lost the play and they're going to push for it with all their plays but Whitten coming back for more frags McAlele picking up the final ones as well so a bit of a bit of mind games going on it's almost like an episode of Death Note where they're trying to outdo each other but this time Kingwin get another round on the board I think I'm not sure if anyone was actually looking at the smoke there and that's kind of because uh, because Whitten was I mean they were trying to get into the site but you would expect at least one guy to be looking towards your flank especially in that kind of situation Witten has been always in CT spawn as well. They have used almost the same setup in pretty much every round or close to that of Penguin. So, either way, Gamers 2, they are close to going for the eco now. They just need to be broken one more time, and Fox is going to start things off well with a pick towards long. So now Gamers 2 are in a, a bit of a predicament with a man down. Don't want to take too many risks here. They want to try to get some map control or get a, a pick but they don't want to lose any more players. Now, they've only got two smokes to work with, so the Wall of Smokes play is going to be not super effective, but it can, it can still be done, and it can still be effective in a round like this. But what are they going to pick? Looking for entries so far is what it, uh, what it appears to be they are trying to accomplish. Once again, we have uh, Short pretty much being left for free. Whitten looking on the other side of uh, mid, but not going all the way to look at Short, and you can see Fox playing from that position near car, so he can constantly they're protect himself and give smoke. himself extra angles. And uh, as Dan said, you can see they're trying to find someone to frag over the smoke. It's not going to happen. And uh, Fox is going to get the first frag. They know where he is now. There is a uh, smoke referred to as a Fnatic smoke, which kind of smokes off that position, but hasn't been found just yet. And he's just finding himself frag after frag, support from Witten to get two more. And Kingwin getting back into this match now. That was unfortunate for them. You can see that they... I, I wonder if they have the smokes, because... Because again, like they only had two smokes, so it can be difficult to understand how to make the play. But the most, the biggest danger is the AWPA from from crossover. If you want to get into the A bomb site, they so see, they seem to try and manually throw the smoke, yeah, yeah. and just completely fumbled it because you have to throw it from in front of the stairs on short. Absolutely. So to clean up the potential of this eco, they all try to line up for the kills. Uh, should be pretty easy. She's off, but it, I I agree. It does seem as if they don't have the set smokes in their repertoire. What is this though? <laughs> Moose, Mouse, sorry, is getting three kills there, including one of his teammates. Um, but that's uh, significant damage to Kingwin. Yeah, that's 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 
colossal damage, I'd say. Let's have a look at the money after this round. Well, this has got a lot in the bank, actually. So with only three rounds left, it's not the worst situation in the world. But they, don't, they definitely don't want to lose this round or any other rounds, but spe yep. specifically this one. <coughs> but yeah, we can see uh, having those set smokes can be a problem. Fox, however, this time is going to go for a very quick peek. Wow, that's amazing there from Fox. Takes a quick shot onto an in innocent as they move up for the cap push. However, Miku is still going to make the entry there onto a rain as Quitten has his crosshair locked firmly on those players as they make their way up blind as bats. Although bats aren't blind. So I think Minis ran out on short with a knife out because of where Fox was. He wasn't expecting somebody to be holding the angle from car mm. where Fox was holding it. But Quitten got a free kill from Long. That said... Long has been lost and we've got uh, Shapiro moving up there now, which is going to make the retake harder. However, the flank's coming in from Fox. It's not looking too bad so far. Game is too slow, two players in position, although that said, Fox is going to pick up Spiro as well, leaving everything down to Mouse. He will get eliminated as well. So, Kingman with a nice round, actually, and they're starting to make a bit of a recovery here. Gamers, uh, Gamers 2, with the start that they had, probably would have expected to get a little well, maybe a couple more rounds in there. They can still make it a, a 9-6, of course, but uh, Kingwin look well and truly on a roll at the moment. And uh, Gamers 2, I'll have to see what kind of play they bring in right now. They've shown a really, really fast play down middle. I don't think it, the logic for that to happen works right now anymore because Kingwin are going to feel more comfortable. They're going to have orbs facing. We saw Fox already is doing that. Look how fast they're pushing short this time. They're not messing around. I think they let the uh, Kingwin get back into the game when they kind of overthought things that one time where they had no map control late on the, into the run. This time they're going straight for the picks again on short. Innocent Mishu coming together to take down Rain and Whitten. That is an empty A bomb site. Kingwin very out of position. They're going to have to force the issue through smokes. And uh, going to have Manise there just taking a frag on the lurk. And they did know that he was he had to be there, but he still claimed one kill. And now they're going to have to make the retake happen up from short. And Mouse is going to make life a little bit more difficult. Just Michael Lilly left now as he looks to see what he can get done. Just tossing a smoke to help him out, but Spiro will get the frag. So 6-8 to eight as gamers to reclaim another round. And Kingwin will not have any issues on the buys, but Gamers 2 may have found a solution here, which is just these faster entries. Kingwin are being exploited like diamond miners at the moment. They know that short is there for free, and they just took it. Absolutely took it. No messing around. Just uh, nice and dirty. No need for any fancy nades or anything. Just run up short because no one's going to be there. More guns than they have, and that's going to be that. Now we've got a rush B. Don't stop. McLeary forced out of the site already. Going to leave his teammate scream to try and clear things up. We've got flash plays, but the frags are coming back and forth. Trades for both teams now. Three versus two for the CTs, but it's the uh, Gamers 2 side in control of B, but with only one player at the moment. This is going to be quite an awkward one. However, they have a guy coming in from uh, T-Spawn at the moment, although they will lose Quitten. So uh, I guess you'll feel more confident to get the bomb planted now. But here we go. Mouse versus Fox. Very important choice. Uh, Fox is actually not going to find anyone just yet. It's going to be down to Manai. This is the last man standing. Going to go for this. Oh, wow. Straight through the fire, but he does get eliminated by Rain. I'm not sure if he anticipated that, but he responded well. And Kingwin will pick up round number seven to make an 8-7 first half here for Gamers 2. So very interesting uh, first half, I've got to say. Um, I feel like Gamers 2 could have taken some more rounds. Yeah, I, I, did. I really do think they, they uh, may have let Kingwin into the game on that round where they just made it too complicated. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, par partly... Sometimes you, you've got to recognize what's working for you. And what was definitely working for them is just moving together as a unit. And you, you, we found that when they got back into the match later on after this big streak from Kingwin, that was, again, what was uh, their strength against Kingwin, is their just sheer ability to move quickly into areas and trade efficiently so that they then have a, an afterplant situation. And that's how they, they, they got their lead. If we, c we can see here on the scoreboard, like uh, four early victories were due to the bomb actually exploding. And also, there's a, we can see a diffuser. So they're getting the bomb down almost every round in the early stages. So it just what goes to show. It's worth noting that there is a coach on the server for Kingwin called Daniel with two ends. It's not me. It's not. My, 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 my Do you think the second end is a typo? Out. But anyway, I don't know who that person is. Do you know who that person is? No. Maybe somebody can tweet us who that person might be. But it's good to see that it's a brand new team and they've got a coach in total as well. I don't know country he's from. Could be from anywhere. Could be from Zaire, for all we know. 
maybe he's a Zairean coach, but probably not. Um, but uh, anyway, it's good to see that they have a coach in tow. Again, a new team should help them uh, mold faster. And again, I, I think we're going to see them more or less finding their feet. I know they've been scrimming, of course, all the time, like every day. Um, all these teams all play each other behind closed doors, which you don't see. Um, but uh, I'm guess I guess they're still going to be finding their feet across all the maps, pretty much. So we'll have oh to yeah. see how they develop as time goes on. They need to figure out what roles work best as well for each player, because they have a quite a lot of versatility in their lineup also. I mean, Scream, Quit, and Rain, and Michael Lillard are all very, very capable riflers, as well as, I mean, to me, the only super clear role is, I guess, I guess as Quit and as, you know, volunteered for it, you know, as in-game leader, <coughs> well, he can easy in-game leader, but also Fox as the AWPer, dedicated AWPer. Those are the two clearest roles. And then, um, you know, Rain, I suppose, it's, I guess it's between him and Michael Lillard, I guess, on the kind of the entry roles, because I feel like Scream is a guy you want alive in your mid-rounds with the rifle. You just, you just do. I think it was Dazed who made a good video about players' roles and what they're used to playing in their teams and problems that can arise. Let's say if uh, there's a map where, let's say two people play apps on Inferno, then one person obviously has to play somewhere else and then they have to get used to playing in that position and you know there's like uh, teething problems and adjusting and all that kind of stuff. So if these, if these players have uh, roles from their previous teams where they may have played the same position, then we may have to see that kind of thing happening as well. Yeah. So there are many variables for this team, and I think we should be live soon. It was about a two-minute pause. So while we listen to that airplane going past, I wouldn't fly past a war zone like this, Dan. I wouldn't advise it, but <coughs> make sure you hit the follow button on the channel. When we hit 550k followers, we will be giving away this bison. Signed by Mr. Get Right, but not only that. As nice as this is, I know this is a very desirable weapon, guys. As nice as this is, we will also be giving away my stat track gut knife. Slaughter. Which one of my one of my oldest knives. I think that's the oldest knife I, 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 I own actually. The one I've had the longest. But anyway, we are back into the game. <coughs> okay, so the second half. Yeah, okay, we're gonna have a quick boost for Mihu up into catwalk. And uh, quite a few nays actually on Gamers 2. As we see, Minai is in a very forward spot. And he's actually one of the players with the most grenades on his team. So it'll be interesting to see how he can use these, as he might get assaulted by them, a multitude of players. Mihu can actually cover well. And if they do go for that B push, then that rotation from Gamers 2 is going to be really fast. So Team King would actually not necessarily looking really good here, especially if Spirit can pick up some kills. But ooh, instantly ding, that is really painful. But he can still play the crouch game. Oh, there's the nade. Great stuff there. Money! Cream. And in comes Mouse. And Gamers 2 on the retake. Okay, so Mini's got to try and hold things down there. Gets the flank straight away. Very nice play indeed. But there's a lot of guns for these Gamers 2 guys to face when they try to enter this bomb site. And they have a smoke, a flash, and a decoy to do it. But they're running out of players. Fox, Rain combining. Take down Innocent and Miniz. Mishu soon to go as well. Just down, left down to Mouse. And uh, too many guns to contend with. For gamers, two, for gamers 2, they put themselves in really nice positions, as Dan pointed out there. Didn't overextend, just position themselves to react quickly, but not quickly enough. Too many guns coming through those B tunnels. That nade, Kobe Bryant in the house, ruining lives on the B bomb site. Yeah, that's going to tie things up. That's a spot where Spiro, in that position, can just easily get two or three kills sometimes, in some situations. It's just you just never know. And he, this time he couldn't get the kills easily from that spot, so. Well, it's anti-eco time, and a lot of teams, what they like to do on the T side here for the anti-ecos is to spread out a little bit sometimes like this, but then come together for a long take and long push, because it's very easy to use your utility, your grenades, to basically flush any close range players out from long, and then just take long, and then have constant long ranges until you get to the bomb plant, and then it's just, you know, uh, Shapiro's in an awkward position. He knows if he tries to jump into the back of sight, he's going to get shot in the head. So he's pretty much stuck. Got support coming in from Mishu, but it's not going to be enough. Shapiro taking down uh, Witten. But that's going to be that. Mal's innocent and Miniz left to try and get as much damage in as possible. That CZ might come into, into play here. We'll see if they... I think they might position themselves to actually go for the exits. So you can see, rather than approach from B slope, which would be normal, so they're going to head maybe towards... Uh, exit, which is where the T's are more likely to go considering where they're expecting the CT's to come from. 
that said, of course, they're going through CT, so the plan has not worked here for um, the remaining gamers' two players, as Kingwin are going in the opposite direction. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cool to see that Kingwin is up there with that B, B take. can be very effective as well. Uh, something that I really like <coughs> that NIP started doing on Inferno is on their their anti around this spot where you were maybe expecting pistol armor. Of course, Gamers 2 actually did, by the way, the smart thing, and they didn't get armor with their pistols because it doesn't really help you that much on, on a map like this. This is, this is one of the hardest maps to basically win a pistol armor eco, or, well, it's not really eco, but a pistol armor force. It's the hardest map, I think, to actually do that at CT. So it's smart that they didn't do that. They're going to need all the money that they can have for those big, big weapons, all the nades and stuff, when they do actually go for the buy. So I do like that option. And already Skoon's going to make an entry into the B-bomb site for his team as they spread out. But they do have help. They can always trade here for uh, Kang Kingwin. No one's really alone. Gamers 2 are trying to stack wherever they think these T's are coming from. They abandoned very briefly the A-bomb site. Now they're going back. Now they're going back over to B once more. But uh, Kingwin just teasing, poking, prodding in all kinds of directions at the moment. Gamers 2 asking questions. You can see the push coming out now. We had uh, Mishu just trying to bait and just suggest nobody's in B tunnel by shooting from the back of B, but Scream was wiser than that. Took down the player. So, two CTs remaining now. Yet to find a frag. Scream only on 6 HP, so he's going to maybe take a back seat for the remainder of this round. We have an interesting situation here in lower tunnel. And... Uh, Oh, Mishu doesn't want to be playing out of his knife right now. Oh, doesn't get the frag. He wasn't really walking. His crosshair placement was a bit all over the place there. And there's that CZ coming into play. Very dangerous weapon indeed. Gets reload in, but cannot save the AK. Yeah, so, uh, well done by Kingwin there. You see that they actually forced the rotation for a free A bomb site, which is nice. And uh, now it's the buy, and we have the full, full buy pretty much from Gamers 2. We do only have one kit on mouse, and that could end up being an issue, you never know. And Spiro on the AWP, and Spiro is going to go towards the B bomb site, I do believe. So they don't actually have an AWPer on the A side of the map, interestingly. So it looks like they're just going to spot, you know, put him on, on the plateau and then just be done with it. So interesting cho choice as far as how you use the AWP. And that's actually really strong as well. If King Win go for that style where they play a really heavy uh, kind of picking style, that can be really, really strong. But I think we now have catwalk control. Dark control. They have all the... This is the basic round now. This and is the fairly similar to what we saw in the other half, actually. In terms of the uh, like the peaking through mid from Gamers 2. The control of short from the T's. And they can still do any play. Any either play as well. This bomb is not committed at this point. They've got three Molotovs on the, C on the T side. And four smokes. So I'm quite curious as to what the plan is here. Lots of flashbangs on the Gamers 2 side. And that is the last smoke that's just been thrown. So it looks like they are very heavily posturing for this A split. But again, if things don't go too well, they can still go for that B play. But it looks like it is going to be the A split. In go the grenades. And there's Mouse. It's going to have to come out with a nice result here. As uh, the smoke to get themselves up safely onto that bomb site. But so far, it's looking a little bit troublesome. Innocent and Mouse, both with frags of their own. There's a nice trade from Scream. And the bomb is so close to getting planted now. Just has to make its way over crossover. Okay, so Mishu positioning himself to kind of retake long and flank in the way that Fox did on the uh, previous half. Britain's not going to win the duel, however. So it's going to be a three versus two retake. And now King Grin are in a difficult position because they don't have control of short or long. But they do have Scream and he's popping heads. Two versus two now. Mishu and Miniz trying to come back. Makalele going to get a penetration kill here. And they've got a, an interesting setup at the CTs. Sorry, the T's. Scream goes down. Mishu running out of time and Akalele makes him run out of HP. So, three round lead here for King Gwyn after a difficult first half. Yeah, it's going to be uh, the eco for gamers too. They're going to have to uh, consider how to play this on the next buy, but perhaps they'll be able to get some damage done here. King Gwyn, they just have to play a safe anti eco round again. Previously, they showed that, uh, that play into B after a bit of a split and pick. I wonder if they'll go for a bit of a mix-up, but it looks like, no, they're just like, moving very quickly here. Good that he considered quite dangerous there was a stack, but there wasn't really a heavy stack. Just uh, two players immediately, and then there's a third one that we'll deal with, and they did not maybe expect Mouse to be hiding there. He's going to go down as well, and around will be won by Kingwin. So, I'll have to see if Team Kingwin can get a nice situation here. As you can see, they've got a big streak of rounds so far in this second half. 
They've got the double op set up out there from Michael Elliott and Fox, and we're going to see a double op from Manite and Spiro as well. So this is where things get interesting. This is what your, your Fnatic NIP Dusty is always all about. But Fox is going to pick up the early frag. Michael Elliott looking to do the same. He won't pick it up just yet. And Minai's with a reposition towards Cat. Oh, again? Wow. Wow. That's ridiculous. See you on YouTube, Mr. Fox. Okay, well, there's another one. So, Fox versus Gamers 2, and he is 3 0 up at the moment. He's only got one life, and he's taken three. Oh, my God. Just the two offers left. Uh, I, think King, I think King Gwyn should just stand there at double doors and let Fox just clear up. And he's trying to do so, but that AWP nerf's going to make him emerge slowly indeed. And uh, his fun, his party train, Dan, has stopped. The police have come and they've taken away all the red cups. Well, the thing is, is that they know what Minai's is, but they're still going to move into the B bomb site. interestingly. They're going to actually take the kill. So that's nice. Spirit is going to go down. And oh, they get Minai's as well. That, that is just such a, um, a flat round there from, from Gamers 2. It's like when you, when you open up the, you know, the carbonated drink, James, but there's no longer, it's, it's been out for too long, it's stale, no carb it's not car no longer carbonated, it's just flat. I, I, can't, I can't find the link there, I've got to be honest. Oh, wow, Spiro, not having a great time going through those doors. Might have to get the nade out to, to pass because uh, he's getting dinked. He's got the mag. And no one to frag. Lonely man standing on a box. Yeah, Kingwin again just taking it slow. They just have to be very wary of any pushes, and they have essentially exited that kind of timing on the map now. So it's now it's, now it's time to get some uh, some basic map control, as it's very unlikely Gamers 2 are going to go for like a delayed take of some control at this point. The only thing that they could potentially do like that is maybe an upper dark player, but they have a man in place to deal with any upper dark shenanigans. The, that that smoke is offensive. On short, it's like it's a fifty percent of the job done there. That's not ideal. Although they've done exactly the same smoke, which makes me wonder if this is a deliberate thing. It's probably disadvantageous actually to walk out there and you're gonna have the the side of your body exposed. The baiting thing that you We will see. It. Well it might be, but maybe they're trying to bounce it off the, 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 the short bricks, we don't know. We've got a player on the site there. Oh, no connection on this occasion. One man advantage here for Gamers 2 as they try to uh, retake control of the A site. We've got orps all over the place. Is this AWP India or is it Dust2? Oh, that's just outrageous plant attempt there from Makalele. Fox doing what he can to try and help him. And he's going to get the money for his team. And now Fox actually can potentially hold this one down. Uh, let's see, he's got 13 HP though. So he don't like his chances on this one as he looks at these shots. Where are these CT players? Oh, he's gonna get taken down on the reposition. He's gonna have scabs in the morning from that from that fall. I had a scab on my shin. I picked it this morning. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. So he didn't eat it off. Picking the scabs. No, I stopped doing that a while ago. There's, there's a <laughs> there's a line. I think you. There are no uh, lines. There are only circles. Pop, skipped and jumped over it. Gamers too are being savaged through these metal doors, Dan. Savaged. Miniz dead. Spiro, 36 HP. Bad times. Double orps. Fox Makalele. So it's hard for them to make the covers here. And again, the the expected CT setup is the 2-2 two -two split. That's actually not what we've got here. We've got Gamers 2 kind of gambling a little bit towards a B play from Kane Quinn. So the triple. Normally in this spot the T should attack A because it's much harder to hold that down with two players. Rain picked up the AWP in double doors and disposed of it. He just he just removed it and picked oh, up the AK okay. again. Big pick though from McLelly <coughs> into the B bomb side. That's gonna basically get do the call for itself as uh, they are gonna try to make their way in now, but Mouse is quickly in position as he was in CT spawn. He's gonna get one frag, has to switch to the pistol, looking for the second one is close, but not quite. And that's actually gonna give gamers Two, a really good edge on the B-bomb side, but Kingwin have recognized this. They've fallen back, and now they're holding. There's 35 screen? seconds left, so they can still actually just go for that B-play. And, of course, the rotation has been forced. Gamers 2, of course, they have to try to go for this and get ahead of the play. So well done on, on the call from Kingwin there. Dan, three why, orps! Why is the headshot machine using an orp? Why, there's, why is there three orps? That's what I want. What if, why is Scream using an orp? 
actually got a, a tag there. Miku going to be able to pick up both frags. And now it's down to Michael Lilly. He's got no time to play with. Mouse has to play the time with an innocent. And there's nothing that Michael Lilly can do there. And you do have to wonder why they're trying to enter into a site with three or when they have to all be running. I, f I feel like that's a confidence thing there because... I feel like it's a stupid thing to do. It's, it is also that, but... Stupid. You have to assume that they feel like they've won the map already because Scream with an AWP. No. It's, it's Scream just, is a headshot just, machine. It's just really weird. It's just like, if there's a rifle there, it's really incorrect decision making, to be honest, but... We're going to have uh, them suffering because Gamers 2 will pick up that round. However, uh, Kingwin did uh, manage to save the AWP onto Michael Elliott, so they, and they do force up behind it. It's just uh, Rainey's really suffered with the Tech 9, and it's not like having a Tech 9 is any sort of purgatory at all. It's actually Game, quite good. Gamers 2, uh, for a second there, just changing their setup towards long. You had Innocent holding kind of longer view, but he's moved very close indeed. But we have bodies all over shorts at the moment. Whitson taking some damage, but looks like we're gonna have a push here from the T side. No smoke necessary, just a few nades, and they're all gonna charge out onto shot. We've got a four man short push here, and there's only one person dead so far. Yeah, Mouse is down below, but he needs to get something done here. Looking for the first frags here. The spray is going to come in, and it's going to be fairly decent as he finds the head of Fox. Mihu coming in with a double of his own, and it's a sandwich, a Polish sandwich with a nice center of Kingwin. As we do have Spiro now making his way in, and it's just Rain. He's got, well, he's got no life left now. Spiro will find the kill, and Gamers 2 pick up another round. So Kingwin and now on an eco situation. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... The way that they got into this position, there was definitely some some spots which they I think they could have played better. Speaking of Polish sandwiches with things in the middle, we haven't had pierogi yet. We have to go and have pierogi. Some cabbage, some cheese. It's glorious. Ca cabbage has never been more glorious than in Polish pierogi. Cabbage is delicious. Okay, so we've got the spray down coming in here from Gamers 2, just picking up the eco frag. Padding out those stats. There we go. 12 rounds for them. And Kingwin are now feeling Gamers 2 breathing down their necks as they look to take control of the match. And in such a late stage as well, they could even take control of having the first map in this uh, this best of three series. So, AWP on Spiro, AWP on Fox. Fox has got the best record so far with the AWP, i got to say. So. Yeah, and now Gamers 2 getting closer to the score of Team Kingwin and... If they continue winning rounds, I'm just going to think back to the Triple Lord Madness towards B, but we are in round 26, so we'll have to lament those actions a bit later on. Kingwin with a bit more nades than we've seen them recently. Game is too somewhat lacking, but they've got the mollies in there. Let's see what this approach was like from Kingwin, because last time it was a bit, uh, it was just open, let's just, let's just go. It's just 1v1, but four times over on short. And this time the lasers are pointed all over the place. So you can see there's a lack of presence on long for Kingwin. Now they're trying to watch their backs from short. A bit of paranoia setting in, but there's no flank just yet from Gamers 2. Bomb is in solitary towards B. And you have to wonder if they're going to push and split here. It seems they're going to try and bait for an A push, but in fact it's going to be through B. But Mishu has other ideas. Got to hold down with the M4A4. That's the power of the gun there. All those bullets. Got to find loads of frags. Minis boosted up. Not going to find the frags. Rain going to spot him. And here comes the push onto the B-bomb site. This is pretty pretty good from Kingwin. It's just going to be Innocent and Mouse left oh, over. And you planted. would be surprised to see them actually pull this one off. They only have a flashbang each. There goes Mouse. He needs a fast frag on the box there. That would really help out. But he's going to get taken down by Rain. However, it's Innocent. I mean, two of the players are very low, but he's going to back away. Kingwin are going to pick up the round. So... That was a really nice, just uh, straight up cat drop play, and that's. Th I mean, this is one of the reasons I think why T, T side dust two is one of the easier maps to play T on because if if a team is giving you catwalk for free and you can set up like that, you don't even need a pick. It's so strong to just do a, a play like that. You don't even need a pick to do it. We already saw that Miku was able to pick up two frags on the defense from the B doors. That's actually pretty awesome, but still, it, it's still so hard to get in there and go for that retake as the CTs and react quickly. So, Kingwin 14 now and Gamers 2 on 12. And we will have a very, very strained buy from Gamers 2. One of the players, Minize, is on 
a P250 and Mouse is on a Thamas. Right, so <coughs> they're trying to nullify the AWPs here by smoking themselves off, which does allow the uh, T's to go through the doors, but uh, pretty much stops the uh, AWP getting anywhere. So they will use that to take control. Looks like they know what Kingwin wants to do, and they're going to stop them for now. B bomb site's been abandoned by the CTs. Minis only with a P250. So it looks like they're going to play B retake and stack A. Bit of a gamble, but it's paying off so far as they seem to have made the right decision. But bomb still in a passive position. You saw Whitten there just keeping an eye on the B tunnels to see if any flanks were coming in for his team. There will be no flanks. They're all over towards A screen now. You can see him looking for some information. But Michu, he's been boosted up here. In a very sneaky position indeed. Actually, sorry, they've got one person on B, but it's cut off on my screen. And that's going to be uh, Shiro. Nice is through there with a the quick pop flash. They're still curious as to what is actually happening. There's a very strange timings here from Kingwin, and they're trying to really mess the games two around, but it's finally going to actually be pushing in to the late bomb site. We've got Mihu with a nice kill there, making his way up onto Catwalk. Spiro there for support as Mihu goes down, has to take this frag. He's going to pull it off as well. It's going to be a rain downed by Spiro, but he's got still quite the task to accomplish. Quitten and Fox. Got to go for the plant there. In goes the nade, but neither of them are, are quite low enough, but Spiro is able to take the head off of Fox. Oh, Quinton gets low, but Spiro still will go down. Good stuff there from the in-game leader of Kingwen. As Team Kingwen go on to match point, or rather game point, map point, but not, but not series point. As this is a best of three. Game is two. The pie looks even worse this time. Oh dear. Oh dear. Got a big pop of pump on Innocent. Oh, we've got shotgun shells all over the place, and Spiro is getting tagged again through double doors. There are sometimes you play that soon, you just get tagged like every single round, and it's intensely irritating. So I feel for Spiro. Already in dire straits with well, the buy. Three guys in mid, though, for gamers, too. They're trying to gamble a little bit here. And Kingwin are going for a big rotate, so gamers, too, with their little gamble, might not pay off. If game, if uh, King wouldn't decide to go for a long play, looks like they are going towards long at the moment. So I have to see what King Wing decides to go for right now. But gamers two, they need a good engagement. That's not a good engagement at all. Rain is going to take an easy kill onto my eyes, and things could only look. That's more of a divorce than an engagement. Oh dear. See what I did there? No. Huh? Go huh? Away. Go away. Shut up. Shut up now. No, don't shut up. Do some commentary too. Oh, thanks. Okay, so the push coming in from long, just after the push from short, he's trying to force. Oh, in the face! He's trying to force the rotation, but the rotation was not going to happen because he's wiser than that. He knows what the devious plan is. Three versus three now. Trying to hold things down again. The CZ is dead, showing himself to be very dangerous indeed. Rain heavily tagged, but not finished off. Two versus two. That Mag 7 is going to be miles away from the range it needs, but Rain could fall. He's found first. Oh, so close, but no cigar. There's a cigar. Smoking's bad for health, by the way. Don't recommend it. That's going to be another round in the bag for gamers, too. With a horrible buy down, they make it work. They keep themselves in game one for the time being. Pick up some booty as well. Very, very nice. Very, very nicely done. And uh, still, King Reno with enough cash to get the fight. Going, of course, but uh, Gamers 2 now, they look significantly bit, you know, more healthy than they have done in the past. And Kingwin actually, they made a pretty awesome play there, to be honest. They managed to uh, actually circumvent the strongest setups from Gamers 2, but somehow still, you can never count out just hitting the shots. The pure power of hitting the shots in this game. We are going to have uh, three players towards B again, another gambly kind of play, but Gamers 2 need to be going for stuff like this to actually make sure that they can uh, get themselves back from a very dire uh, spot. And Kingwin, they've got that upper dark control initially. But now it's just about working out, okay, how, you know, which play do we call? And that's based on what information you find. And there are, there are ways to get that. You know, pop flash yourself through mid, get yourself up catwalk, try to get some uh, some safe peaks. But you need that info. You don't want to play blind if you don't have to. So three towards B. Nobody mid for now. 
maybe they're banking on a mid push from Kingwin. And, they, and look, they've got one person running destruction on short. He's rotating through to double doors now. But uh, trade's coming in. They've still got two people on the B bomb site. Bomb is lurking outside the tunnel. And we need to try and slow things down. Teammates flash, but that spray's going to do the job. Nice taps to the next player. Spiro doing great work there. Two versus two now. But uh, one CC, that's innocent. Very out of position indeed. Mouse has to wait for him to uh, get a lot closer than that. Innocent is coming in from Upper Dark. There's the quick one on one. So important. Goes for it. Gets the shot onto Fox. Going to be two versus Michael Lele now on that bomb side. Looking for game point. But no, it's going to be Innocent who will make it so that gamers who can hold on for just a moment longer and bring themselves potentially to what could be an overtime. Got one more round oh. that, can, that can happen. Show me the money. Well, Dan, you know what I'm thinking right now? Triple I Ops. I want to see, see a Tech-9 um, tech armor rush with nades, like a set play, like Wall of Smokes on the way. That's what I want to see. I think that would be like a really strong way to play around like this, because Games 2 have been giving us catwalks so much of the time as well. But Fox already gets tagged, so... Ouch, that's gonna hurt. Triple orb Dan. Yep. Scream and orb. Two people lower tunnel here for King Gwyn. Now what is the what are their options going to be? Again, for those pistols, they're gonna wanna be close quarters. How are they going to exploit the use of those? Game is two now, they've put three people over towards the A site as opposed to three on B the last round. But that nade combination coming in on short. I really want to see the Wall of Smokes play with this because they need to they need to get close and the only way to get close to the Tech Nines um, to to get a quick uh, plant and a post plant is the Wall of Smokes. Now, if that happens, Mouse has to stop the bomb from going down and they are going to go for this. No Wall of Smokes. Okay, there is actually some kind of a half wall, but that's not good enough. It's going to be uh, easy fragging here for Mouse. He's down low though. But still, the bomb cannot be planted, and they are going to clean up and get themselves the overtime. So it does seem like Kingwin are certainly lacking some of the, the set smokes, just as Gamers 2 seem to be as well. I can understand it on the Kingwin side, though, yeah. because they're a new team, and A, you've got to learn the smokes, but B, you have to understand who is supposed to throw what smoke as well. Yeah. And that's in multiple situations on multiple maps, so that's oh, yeah, going to yeah. take some time. But Absolutely. at least they got their Fnatic smoke down. Hello. They got their Fnatic smoke down where they... Uh, they smoke the top of a slope. Okay, so we're going to be back into the, the action here. So we've got uh, MR3 and loads of money. All the cash. Max, max, max. Okay, so it's just a simple normal setup from Gamers 2. Double locks on both sides. They need Fox to get the picks. Uh, Kingwin. And the thing is, if, they, if you don't have the execute potential nade, I mean, we can see why they've been going for the B plays so often, the B splits, because they've been doing that quite a lot. I just want to say quickly, now they've got double ops uh, gamers too, they've left uh, Spiro on B on his own and put four towards A now. But there are people in CT, so if they go for that split again, they're going to be in a position to do something about it. That boost coming in once again for gamers too. Yeah, and they are going to be moving through for that B split. Again, they've been favoring this a lot. And I definitely think this is because they don't have all the grenades for that A set play to work efficiently. It's going to be Miku, though, the story of Miku, just lurking above this crate with that boost. He's going to spot all the players. There comes the spray. Miku gets three kills in a row as Spiro chimes in with one into Upper Dark from Plateau on his orb. And it's going to be down to Mike Lele to make something happen. But there it is. Spiro finishes it off. And it's going to be Gamers 2 with a perfect counterplay all about that boost on Mihu. And that's something you never really see, yet, to be honest. I don't remember the last time I saw a team use that boost. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that boost in competitive play. So uh, very smartly done there. And again, do you, do you think that, like, I just can't get a triple up out of my head. Do you think it was arrogance? I don't know. I think it's, it's just bad decision making. I don't know what caused the bad decision making. But they, like, you want at least two players in a situation like that. Because they played it correctly up until that point. But I think this is this is a, a topic of discussion for post-match. As we do have uh, the overtime still rolling in here. We've got uh, round two. Game is two with the first CT round of the first half. If you're not familiar with how overtime works, it varies from org to org. But in this one, it's MR3. 16k. MR3 means rather than playing 15 rounds a half, you play three rounds a half. 16k means you start with 16k. 
And uh, things getting a bit awkward here for Kinguin on long. They had two people there ready to push. No flashes or anything. One person peeks, gets orped. Second person dilly dallying. Molotov comes in. And uh, Gamers 2 will retain possession of long as the push comes in on short. But and all these flashes have kind of put a stop to that as well. Yeah, it's going to be about these, these picks here from Kingdom. They don't have the smoke coverage as they'd like it, but there is Minis able to take some damage down onto Kingwin as they make their way in. And this has been significantly thinned out. It's just quit and left, and the Kukli style should be more than enough to finish this one off from uh, Minis, but he's... Kukli Airlines, Dan, flying on one engine at the moment. Here we go. And he's just trying to play a toy with Quitten as his teammate comes in. And he's actually going to get the plant off here, which is quite funny. <laughs> no, he's going to run out of bullets. But uh, he did occupy Witten for long enough. He, to be fair, he was trying to play that as safe as he could. He didn't want to create a situation where it's a one-on-one -on -one post plant, which is why the delay was important there. So very nice that by, uh, by him, even though it, it could look to some as to be a little bit chaotic. But double ops will still be in play here for gamers too, as uh, Kingwin I yet to claim a, a T round on the first overtime. Okay, so Fox once again just ripping people through those doors. He has been in his element on this map doing that. And again, Spiro finds himself in a position where if he jumps up, he should get shot unless one of his teammates smokes or nades off. You see that smoke has indeed come in to save him. Once you're behind that red box, you're more or less stuck unless you get the assist. Gamers 2 being down a man early on is very problematic. Getting aggressive to try, try to even that out is, is certainly a, a valid choice. And we're going to see Mouse behind the stairs. Again, this is not super common. It's not something that's really shown all that much. So it could be the element surprise here. Oh, gets flashing the wrong moment and gives away his position to boot, and that is going to be Kingwin with a significant edge in this round. But, and this one can still do some serious damage here. If they are going to go straight up here into his crosshairs, he can take down a couple players. And there's one. Can really make life a little bit more difficult. And Spiro coming in for the back. There's the bomb down as well. That's huge. They're going to take him down here from both sides, but it's just Spiro left. He's got the bomb on his side. And, oh, come on, please shoot. Yes, but he won't get the kill there with that no scope. And that was dead on. Very unlucky there for Spiro. But he might be able to pick up some other frags. There it is. Scream goes down. This is ridiculous. He's actually made this a clutchable spot. Oh, misses the flick shot. Rain gets the, uh, the headshot onto Spiro there. But uh, gamers too. They made that very scary for Kinguin. Kinguin getting uh, at least one round on the board here in this first half. And we're going to continue here. We have the second half of overtime one. And again... It's going to be three rounds a half, and both teams will start with 16k per player. So, all the toys coming out, all the shiny objects, the family china, the kitchen sink. Now, this time we have one orc for both. Oh, no, no. It's going to be two for Kinguin, and just the one for Gamers 2. So, on Gamers 2 side, they had uh, a solo B player with the orc. We'll see if we see something similar from Kinguin here. So, Shapiro holding the angle, and I think he's going to get peaked. From Makalele, I believe it is. Yeah, indeed it is. Okay, he's going for the Smith style. So uh, Spiro going to completely change his position. And Makalele is going to cross over so we can watch short instead of uh, T spawn. In the meantime, Fox is around A. So he's uh, there if Long needs him, but also short. So we're going to find a solo B player anyway. But uh, Sans or Really cool so far, actually. Whether the orbs have been played between both sides and Mike Lely will get tagged and we'll have to back away. One HP, I can't believe he survived that. Okay, so they are trying to set up for a B play at the moment, our game is too. Put that bomb down there, but uh, gonna take Catwalk for free and see what they can actually get done over here. See if they can uh, spot any players close range. It's gonna be Fox on the angle. No trade though, that's a free frag for him. And a smoke off to just rub it in. The Spiro can't do anything, so they're going to have to go for that play into middle. They want to move now, and that's what they want. So here we are, Gamers 2, going to make their way in. But King going to have good positions here. And he's got Scream, he's close range, he's going to peek out there. Can't get it done though, Minotis with just one bullet, able to take down Scream. But Fox going huge there, two frags from him now. As Michael Lillis at the back of the site, and he's going to get the last kill. Good stuff there from Kingwin. very nice hold. Only losing one member. 
so pretty impressive. But yeah, got a lot of. Uh, sorry. Fox having another monster game here. Just frag after frag after frag. Things tied up for Kinguin again. They need, well, both these teams need 19 to take this in the first overtime, otherwise we are heading towards a second. So all the nades coming out once again. Kinguin continuing with two ops on their side, only the one for gamers two. Spiro gonna get the frag onto Makalele. He will be down in the mid area. Kinguin putting two people towards long. And uh, Rain is rotating backwards and forwards around the A site. And now we're in a bit of a sticky situation towards B. You can see Screams outside trying to uh, look towards double doors. But he's got to try and hold down the sides at the same time. So they're taking a gamble to try and get the information to find out what Gamers 2 are doing. But there are four people in B tunnel. Scream may need help soon as they are all marching in. Oh dear, the smokes and flashes are going to be just serenading, serenading the bomb site as uh, Innocent will pick up. The bomb plant. Rain's going to go straight through, though, potentially. Oh, no, he's not going to actually go for that. Let's see if he's spotting more with smoke. Don't do that just yet. He's going to be coming in back. Try to finish things off, apply some pressure. And there's not much that uh, Gamers 2 could really do wrong in this round to uh, lose this. So, it's done well so far. And they are going to be putting themselves onto game points. So, King would need to win this one. They need to force the next overtime or they will lose map one. Okay, now we've got the second door coming out for Gamers 2. Oh, they're going to go for the... Oh my... I don't know what to say. We've got three <laughs> ops and two auto snipers. Try and go to B now. Good luck, have fun. Wow, he makes it over completely untouched. They what? both do, actually. So, Fox, these players are not. And they're going to dispose of all these guns and go back to four AKs and just the AWP. So, fun was had, or at least it's a consolation frag there. Spiro taking down Fox towards long. Early frag Ooh. for the Polish side. And maybe it's going to be them to make it 19 in the uh, yeah. first overtime. Yeah, this is a spot where they, the game is too, they need to know how to play this. This is the most classic spot you get to pick on this map. And you've got another player. Oh no, they're actually going to catch off my glare. They're going for an aggression in upper dark. It will get smoked off and Scream picks up the frag, but... They get another kill out of it. Four versus three now in favor of Gamers 2 as they're trying to figure out exactly how to play this. Retaking cat control, pushing themselves up into the A bomb side to see what's going on right now. The bomb is lagging behind here for Gamers 2 in the hands of Mouse. But here he comes now. Rain, Scream, and Whitten looking for those frags as these Polish players try to get that bomb planted. It is down on the bomb site now. And so Innocent rejoins his comrades to make things a little bit easier. And it's just about these angels here against Scream and Whitten. That's what this is now. It's devolved into that angel battle, but it's going to be the bomb trying to make its way back. But there's only 25 seconds here. Innocent stuck there by Gandalf. Needs Mihu to get him out of this position. And he's going to move slightly backwards and forwards here. And there's, there it is. Whitten that makes himself known. All down to Scream and Innocent. 10 seconds on the clock. Innocent has no time. He must find the plant here and plant in the right spot. He's going to plant for the, uh, that's the platform plant there. So Scream versus Innocent. Innocent has no idea where Scream is. And there he is, Scream, finding the headshot, taking things to overtime two. Nothing is separating these teams apart from maybe triple ops, Dan. So we'll come back to that a bit later on. I can't believe they didn't get a single tag with four, All that. Three, three ops and two autos. That was like... That was like the A-team van had a burst tire and just came off, came off the hedge. Everyone died inside. Some uh, terrorists come past and just took all the weapons and tried to hit the Coke cans on the side of the river, Dan, and they missed all the shots. Took out yeah, the, yeah. Odd, the, odd, the stray rabbit, but the Coke cans were completely untouched. Yeah, it's very, very surprising. However, I don't really know how to call it between these two teams at the moment. Kinguin on their T sides, that really feels like it's the it's been the problem for them. Um, their CT sides have looked uh, not too too bad, but well, it started off ropey. It, yeah, uh, I mean at least in the over as in the overtimes. But on their T side, what I'm worried about is that Kinguin rely a lot on this this uh, these, these B splits, and we saw that. Gamers 2 were like boosting Mihu up into that crate position. I don't even know if they knew where they were dying from, actually, when he actually just killed three players. Mm. I, don't know if ev I don't even know if they were aware where he was because he was, he was kind of playing on top of the smoke. So he may not have been even able to see him very easily. So And that, that was definitely a go-to play of uh, Kinguin. So 
I wonder if Gamers 2 is starting to work it out a little bit, because they did have two players in mid, ready to deal with a mid, uh, a B split, sorry. So yeah, it's very interesting, uh, the dynamics playing back and forth between the two teams. Um, but yeah. On a subject of smokes, Wondick did an interesting smoke on the, on the boost crate and drop zone on cobblestone earlier, which made it like, uh, it just created a very acute angle for T's to peak, which gave the CTs a bit of an advantage, which is worth Get the CTs an at. advantage? Yeah, like it, it just made was it, it was easier. Was it Wondick or CT or T? CT. Okay. It just, it just basically gave him a bit more cover um, and gave the T's less angles to play with as they tried to peak. That was against uh, Peter on Cobblestone. But uh, here we are, admiring the flagstone flooring. Although it actually looks more breeze blocked than flagstone. Flagstones are wider and more brilliant. I thought you said there was all parquet flooring. Than breeze block. Parquet flooring is nice as well, but flagstone flooring is some serious stuff as well. Yeah, it's, it's I pretty, respect it's, flagstone it's pretty flooring. medieval. I was in a converted church once that was converted into an office and had flagstone flooring and like big antique wooden tables. Whoa. It was epic, Dan. It was epic. I, I would I would walk in there feeling like I'm about to die because I feel I would feel like I was on a set of Game of Thrones or something. That you know, if you get get some goblets in there, yeah, a few candles, then you might be the old rats. Anyway, eighteen eighteen, and we are into overtime two. This time it is Kinguin who start on the CT side. And uh, it's going to be a slow round from Gamers 2. It's really interesting how they were changing the pace on their T side in normal time. Keeping Kinguin guessing. And again, that presence comes in on shorts. And those smokes begin. So you know, this is, this is the, the smoke that I think uh, Gamers 2 are trying to do. But they were just missing the bounce. Oh, they hit, I think they hit the knife in the face. Yep, there was the dink with the grenade. Yeah, well, I think that's the smoke they were going for, and they, did, they were just missing the uh, the rebound Here we go. of the bricks. Here we go, James. Here are some set smokes on today. As is, yeah, we've got some uh, a wall of smokes here. That is what we want to see. Now, this this now for, for those of you who have had me reference this in this game but haven't seen it, this is it. You have two smokes on the site, one on the crossover. You get it on the site, you can get an easy short plant. And the problem is, is that if you allow the plant to go down, as Kingwin have done so, and you don't have a player on Goose or something to actually kill this guy before he can get that bomb planted, you have issues on the retake. It's going to be very difficult. You need that delay to come in. But, but look at the position of Gamers 2 as well. They've got a flank potentially for long. They've got flanks for short from lower tunnel yep. and uh, Spiro as well. So Kingwin are in a horrible position, but they've got a lot of people very close to the fight indeed. They're going to find the jewels and now Gamers 2 are in a lot of trouble. They need to find multiple frags and here comes the spray down. We've got trades all over the place. Scream Whitten running out of time here. Need to find Manise and Mishu. Mishu, he is the money man just waiting for any potential defuse and they will finally clean things up there. Okay, that was a bit of a mess, James. The, the, thing, the thing about that is that it felt like Gamers 2 weren't taking their time on the shots. They're like spraying, they're, like, they're trying to be get right. They're trying to like spray full auto on like really long ranges, all of them, when they have a huge amount of distraction from multiple angles on the CTs. So you can take your time for the shots. And that, that almost cost them massively. And they still won the round with two players left alive, which really shows you how strong that was. And, and this, this is the reason why I was, I was saying earlier, this, that Wall of Smokes play is one of the scariest things that you can execute on the CTs. You need to have that in your repertoire. And uh, we are going to see an upper dark push here from Kingwin. And th this is something that bit them in the backside previously, but this round might work out. But Miniz will get caught. He will see it as well. So now Gamers 2, they're going to make a call mid-round and say, okay, well, listen, are we going to deal with this? Oh, oh that's wow. outrageous. That should never have happened. Miniz got tagged yeah. to 15 HP and long doors. There was a jewel there. He was not ready for it. He didn't get touched once. He flashes himself in versus two and gets a frag onto Makalele. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah, I mean, Makalele with the AWP as well. So now that's really set Kingwin back massively and allowed Gamers 2 to essentially mold Kingwin as they, as they choose. They are putty in the hands of the poles at the moment, ready to be molded as they choose. Rain is going to go for a, a potential aggression here to get some info. They need to know what's going on, but Miniz, can he do it again here? Absolutely not. Rain in a better position. And they will try to trade, and they're not trading very effectively. It's going to be the uh, lack of bullets that will cease Rain's ability to cause further issues. But in come Gamer 2 on the push on Catwalk as well. So now uh, CT's in a bad position as the push comes from long and short at the same time, of course. 
Witten going down, but not before taking loads of plays out with him. Assist from Scream as well. So, Fox versus Mishu now. Fox has been so dangerous with the op. Oh, we've got a bunny hopping around on the site. He's going to push the issue with this P2 P250. Mishu down to uh, 28 HP now. Fox going to have time to reload the M4. Next, it's the basically the first shot wins at this point. So close. Mishu down to six, but Mishu nice. takes it. Really, really, really smart play by Miku there. I mean, you just got to hand it to it. I mean, I would say that Miku has been the best player on Games 2 for quite some time. Um, he's also top ranking, but the thing is, is that he's also, if I'm not mistaken, versus pros, kind of like sixth. He helps them out a lot. Oh, five ops again. Looking for those kills on the doors. My clearly, is he really going to face against five ops? Good job. Not actually going for that. If he if he got a pick there, I I would love it. It would be amazing. But it's not to be. Nobody gets tagged apart from Spiro. Not sure where he took that damage. Spiro. Lord. It feels like you should say Spiro's name with like a Sean Connery accent, kind of accent. Spiro. Spiro. So, McLean is looking for those jewels, but he's going to get out of there, which I think is a good idea because uh, I think he's lost a few of them and oh. been the early pick. What is this? This guy is an infiltrator. He's not being spotted. Oh no. Oh no. Michael Ellie gets taken down from the side. And Mihu. He could have just won gamers to the map with that play. How on earth did he get up mid like just completely for free like that? It's just rain now. But it's, it's surely not going to happen. He's just five players. He will go down. And there it is. They didn't get a single kill in that half. That was ridiculous. Gamers 2 now put themselves in such a strong position to just win overtime number two, moving into this second half, because no one was spotting middle, and it's so cool to test that every I think, now and again. I think poker was being played there, Dan, because, uh, again, there's been a, 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 a few rounds in overtime where Makalele and the rest of the team have had the money to go for the uh, the short peak, but he, they haven't always been winning it. So you saw him scurry off towards the bomb site there, and they just capitalized on that straight away. And again, now... Kinguin must have a 100% T side to stay in this first map. Yeah, it's, it's uh, very, very interesting. And I, I, I mean, and now Spiro is looking up short with the AWP, which I don't, I haven't seen him hold this angle with an AWP this entire match. The pop flash there to get the entry, but they are going to force him back. He's not going to see anything on catwalk. This is completely silent so far. But they have to make the assumption at this point. At this, let's say into the round, you have to make the assumption that catwalk is taken. You've given it up for free, and are they going to go for the execute? Do they have the smokes? Do they know the smokes? They're just going to go in here. There's no smokes in from Kingwin. They've still got three smokes to throw, but none have been used on the entry. They're just going to rely on the angels so far, and it is paying off at the moment. They've gotten themselves into the bomb site with a man advantage, and the CT positioning is not all that stellar. We've got Makalele looking for the flankster. He's going to take one down. Fox going to come in with the second AWP and do the same. Innocent and Miniz to do as much as they can. Miniz is in an interesting position now with only... Oh, well, there's two people on the site. It's planted for short as well, so this should not be doable at all. Misses the first shot, gets double peaked and picked by Whitten. Just Innocent left to try and do as much damage as he can. Maybe pick up the um, AWP as well. He's going to be up against a lot of Kingwin players. So, one out of three down, Dan, but there's still two more to go. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's an interesting spot because they they kind of dry rushed that. There was like maybe a guy threw a flash and a Molotov or something, but that was kind of it. Uh, Games 2 had all the coverage to get like sick op shots as they were crossing, Dan, but they just didn't hit anything. Three ops on the auto. Is he crouching? I hope he's crouching. Oh my god, this guy's got some serious balls. Look at that. That's hilarious. Oh my god. He actually legged Makalele as well. Yeah. What a man. Spiro. Alright, so let's have a look at the layout at the moment. The topography. A slope. CT spawn. The CTs. As we've seen in every round, Short is in control of the T's. Got one player in Goose as well, which I think is Mishu. So. They are well set up here to stop a push onto the A bomb site, but there is a huddle. 
So it could be destruction, then it could be the B split once again. Mishu's already in the boost spot. And now we're going to find out if they are aware of this position. They're looking for it, it seems. Okay, can they take that Mihu? Is he going to do it again? It looks like he is. Oh no, they're looking around. They don't know where he is. There, they finally get him. So Mihu only gets one this time. And finally, Rain, who was on the luck, will get taken down as well for no frags. So it's going to be horrendous right now for, for Kinguin. They need Fox and Michael Lilly to come out with a result here. Again, they need a full... T half. Bomb will go down, so we're into an after plant. But Minaiz is going to take down Fox. Oh dear. Clearly in with a quick shot there onto Mouse, as he's got two more players to find. Coming both from Dark, actually. Michael Lele needing to hit some miraculous shots to make this one work. As the plant, sorry, the defuse is coming in, and the nade is good. And the rounds and the map will be won by games two. So, I, th I think we can see, I think we can see the, uh, the rough edges of. Kingwin at the moment in terms of the T-strats and uh, you can only assume that they're going to be more varied and developed as the team continues to go on. But Dan, three orps. All right, yeah. Well, the, the thing is, is that spot, they played it correctly because they had a situation where they cancelled the push, but they, got, they actually got a lot of frags. So then they forced a situation where there's actually enough time for them to rotate. So then all CTs are like, oh, we can't all be on B. We have to, we have to spread out. So then they're like quickly rotating, and they're like, I think one was maybe 